Do you know that Taller Puerto Ricano has a new building? Well, we were able to capture all of the actions that took place that night. My name is uh, Carmen Feo San Miguel. I'm the executive director of Taller Puerto Ricano, and we are still uh, in the afterglow of an incredible um, event in our history, an incredible event in, in the history of Taller, but also in the history of this community because um, we believe that the opening of the new El Corazón Cultural Center is going to uh, be uh, not only an incredible uh, milestone for Taller to have accomplished and have succeeded in, in finishing, but also um, bring um, a transformative energy to this community. Um, we know that the abilities to attract uh, both increase public, hopefully increase businesses, increase attention to this community. Um, the additional activities that are happening in the building, increased uh, participation from um, both neighbors as well as uh, audiences from outside, our ability to provide additional services, all of this is going to result in positive transformative changes to our community and we are ecstatic and we are um, so happy and overwhelmed with all of the energy that we experienced during the grand opening the a number of people that that came and then you know the number of people that have sent uh, messages of, of um, uh, acknowledging the event and the congratulations so coming up um, we our expectation is um, in the programmatic side that we're going to be able to accommodate additional participants. So in our current building, we can accommodate up to 50 students. In the new space, we're gonna uh, be able to accommodate up to 150 students. So it's almost triple the, the amount of uh, participants, education participants. Of course, because we have much more space, we can entertain many more tours and visits from schools uh, and groups, etc. cetera. Um, the show that is in the gallery that you're uh, taking a little peek on is going to be open um, for almost a year with some trans uh, configurations in the middle uh, with additional artists that are going to take on spaces, um, subdivision spaces with uh, changes in some of the work. Uh, so it's always going to be a refreshed, uh, a refreshed exhibition but the, 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 the sample of the collection is, is gonna be up for almost a year. Um, in addition to that, coming up, it's gonna be the January 6th uh, Three Kings celebration that has been a tradition of Taller. Um, we do uh, ask of parents if they're gonna bring children um, that you know, we would like to provide presents to that they pre-register ahead of time so that uh, we can uh, have adequate <laughs> presence for everybody. Um, but uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice, very colorful event where um, we have uh, three kings and music and, um, and a little um, representation of, of what happened that, Christ you know, that three kings night many, many, many years ago. Art classes that happen after, after uh, School hours for elementary and middle uh, children pretty much focus on art, drama, dance. Um, some other disciplines are um, included that uh, can be ceramics, uh, maybe um, uh, cartoons, uh, maybe hip hop. Um, some of those are interspersed. Uh, in addition to that, the high school participants uh, mm, is a very concentrated program in, in the visual arts. So they do, you know, they do drawing, they do uh, desktop uh, computer design and um, silk screening and, and other graphic uh, methodologies, uh, all concentrating in graphic uh, in uh, visual arts. 
and the purpose is that they strengthen their uh, artistic portfolio to pursue arts careers in college. Um, it is our hope uh, that the building, because of its, uh, you know, I can say personally, magnificent, <laughs> is going to, you know, attract a lot of attention. We are counting on it, we're hoping on it, and, and, and kind of put this community on the map. I think that, um, uh, you know, the Latino communities all over are, uh, you know, sometimes bypassed or ignored, and we, it is our hope that, you know, that the building is going to call attention, good attention, not bad attention, to, to this community. But in addition to that, I think that um, internally, for the community, this is a place that, you know, we want it to be open and inviting, and to and to be um, and to be developed as a as a hub, as a crossroads where people meet for coffee, where people come for a for a gallery show, where people uh, you know have conversations about art and what's happening in the community, where they. Um, you know, hear Latino writers where they, um, you know, listen to good music where they, um, so that it becomes a, a crossroads, a, a, a heart, a cultural heart, uh, a place where people uh, come to experience the richness and the beauty of uh, Puerto Rican and Latino arts. Um, Latino art in the United States, right? Because we all come from different countries in Latin America. The experience of Puerto Rico is different from the experience of uh, Venezuela or the experience of Argentina or the experience of Mexico. Um, but once we come to this country, we are part of that uh, big term that is called Latinos. Um, so for me, Latino art is the expression, the production, the um, the artistic representation of what those artists um, do in terms of communicating uh, artistically what happens in their communities and what uh, you know what their particular um, sensibilities and, and artistic expressions are. And it can be visual arts, or it could be music, or poetry, or uh, uh, you know novels, or, or narratives, or um, or dance, or hip hop, or uh, you know, jazz, Latin jazz, or salsa. So it's you know, it's a it's a multitude and it's a multidisciplinary collection of that cultural expression that then is also modified by the realities of uh, immigration and by the realities of uh, being in this country and not in your country of origin. So, I mean, the, the reality is that, that when, when kids have that opportunity, obviously, they can then develop those talents. I mean, examples of that, of course, uh, you know, are all over the place. So, Frida Kahlo, uh, you know, was part of, uh, of um, the Academia de Arte in Mexico from very early age. Jojo Ma, of course, are examples of that. But we have an, a, even a closer example because Papo Vasquez, who is now a famous trombonist in New York, um, grew up in the in the Philadelphia school system, and he credits his now professional abilities to the fact that he was able to participate in arts programming in music as a, as a young kid in the school system. We can all feel so accomplished today, and we can all feel so happy and proud, and we should linger in in that uh, in that sense of of. Uh, arriving, but the journey is not here. The journey is not finished. Our work is not finished. And I make a call to all of our community, to all of our supporters, to really continue to pay attention, to really continue to stay connected, because in order to sustain and for this center to thrive, it needs from all of us. It needs from you and you and you and me and everybody. I hope you can join us. Thank you.